He's also got maybe the most efficient big man in the country in Zach Eady. Well, that's a nice safety net to have behind those young guards, but handling pressure is going to be the issue. They did it well against Marquette. They didn't have a lot of turnovers. Will West Virginia be different? And the Boilermakers get the first possession of the night. The freshman guard at the point is Braden Smith as it's knocked out of bounds, and he's out there in the backcourt along with Fletcher Lawyer as well, as we set the, the starting lineups for you, but it all really revolves around the guy in the middle. They will try to pound the ball inside to Edie as much as they can. Zach Edie is really the only player in the country that you have to change. You may have to change your entire game plan to deal with. And there's the first of many touches. No double team. And Edie gets the roll. Now, one thing that will not happen in this game, Zach Eady will not be able to bully Jimmy Bell in the post, the 6'10 senior from Saginaw, Michigan. He is big, strong. He's lost a ton of weight, but he's still got a ton of weight and strength to throw at Zach Eady. Some good offensive options for Bob Huggins. The Mountaineers 4-0 coming off a win over Penn. They have won all four of their games by at least 18 points. And when Bell comes out to catch it and press a release, Zach Eady's not going with him. So he's going to be able to make whatever pass he wants. The key is, can the West Virginia wings get open? Smith inside and draws a foul. Braden Smith, the six-foot freshman from Westfield, Indiana. Zach Eady gets the ball just off the block. Bell does a good job of pushing him off the block. And he's got his back to the basket, just sort of backing him down. And I think Bell did about as good a job as he can. Look how far he pushes him away from the basket to make that tough shot. But that's the difference this year in Zach Eady versus last year. You know, that's a shot he's making routinely now. He is averaging better than 20 points and 13 rebounds per game in 30 minutes. And that's a big change. Uh, that, remember, they had trading on Williams, right? They were kind of splitting minutes, but this year, Edie's minutes have gone from about 20 to about 30, but we visited with Matt Painter a little while ago. He said he can handle it. His stamina is great, and he's doing great playing more minutes. Yeah, Matt Painter didn't seem worried at all about the amount of minutes that he can play Zach Edie to play him as long as he wants to. Nice rebound by Bell. Stevenson coming off a great game against Penn, when eight for nine, misses that one, and it's wrapped up by Edie. Well, I love the way Edie wraps that ball up. And if you want to get in there, try to knock it away, you're going to be counting your chicklets at the end of it. But even when Stevenson drives in there, he has to be aware of where Zach Edie is. So he, he wound up trying to take it to the other side of the rim. That allows the Purdue defenders a little bit more time to recover because of Edie's presence there. Adrian Johnson guarding Smith out on the perimeter, and now Mason Gillis. A little high-low look. And it winds, up, it winds up being four round one. Matt Painter does a great job of isolating Zach Eady in that low post, running cutters off, and then they'll run stuff in the middle of the floor where they can go high-low, whether it's with a guard or a forward. Stevenson with a nice kick to the corner and the extra pass. Finds Trey Mitchell, but he misses the three, and it's Purdue ball. Well, Mason Gill is such a good rebounder as a wing. Oh, and that pass tipped away, knocked away by Bell, and back from the Mountaineers. Well, he didn't throw it away from the defense. Johnson, though, with a rebound down to Smith. And you know, when you're feeding the post, you can't just throw it to your teammate. You have to throw it away from the defense. Lawyer, and he buries a three. Fletcher Lawyer, the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the younger brother of former Michigan State Spartan current Davidson player, Foster Lawyer. Fletcher's bigger. He could really shoot it. You know what that's called in the Lawyer family? Mm. A layup. <laughs> they can both really. How about Foster Lawyer? 21 a game right now for Davidson. Yeah, 38 earlier this year. Transferred from Michigan State to Davidson. There's Jimmy Bell Jr. The first points of the night for West Virginia. We spent all week talking about Maui having the softest rings in America, uh, rims in America. These have been pretty soft in the early going. It's soft touches yeah. by these shooters. Why do you immediately go to the rims? <laughs> Again, no double on E. Wow. And that took too many steps. Well, that's Jimmy Bell Jr. You know, he's physical. He's a presence in there. And... He's really doing a good job of fighting Zach Eady for position. The big screen and then 
Lawyer just doing a terrific job. He, he does a great job with that sidestep and sets his feet really effectively. There's the high-low look. And Edie can turn over either shoulder. He's better going over his left shoulder, obviously, because he's right-handed. But he's really worked on that left hand, does a lot of mic and drill. And Matt Painter told us at the end of every practice, he's got a 15-minute routine going over the left shoulder, going over the right shoulder. Smith with a steal, but then Joe Toussaint knocks it out of bounds. Joe Toussaint played three years in Iowa, so he's very familiar with playing against Purdue. And some subs now for the Boilermakers. Brandon Newman is on his way in, and also David Jenkins Jr., another transfer. He comes from Utah, and he has been very productive, Jay, off the bench. Yeah, Brandon Newman had a really good game, I thought, against Marquette. He had nine rebounds in that ball game at 6-5. Another touch for Edie. This one a little bit further out. And again, no double. They're trusting Bell one-on-one, -on -one, and a foul will send Edie to the line. And that's one thing that, that Jimmy Bell Jr. does not want to do. If you can get Edie to turn over that right shoulder and shoot with his left hand, just make him take a tough one. You don't want to foul him here. Like, he's done a good job of making him take a tough shot. That's not an easy shot. Make him make it. Because he's a good free throw shooter. He shoots close to 75%, doesn't he? Yes, sir. And he's going to get there a lot. He's at 74% on the season. Edie, the junior from Toronto, 7'4", 290. You want that in metric? Uh, I think it's 130 kilograms. It's about 130 kilos. Tell me how many centimeters it is. And then, 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 you'll, then you'll really impress me. It's about 220. About 220 centimeters. And he has become part of Canada's Olympic program. He's had a little bit of time here and there in training camp with the senior men's national team, and he just keeps getting better year by year. Canada's got a really good national team. Don't get me started. Okay. To Sot with a floater and is fouled as well. To take us to our first timeout of the night. A good start here for Purdue. Pound says he stands seven foot four he's seven four whether he's sitting down standing or lying down he's always seven four so he's seven four there he's he sitting seven four. he is sitting seven four he gets a breather just over four minutes in and Toussaint completes the three-point play to make it a six-point game really the key for West Virginia in this game is how much pressure can they get on the ball and how much pressure can they put on passers when they're trying to throw in the post and make their passes because this is I think this is a fabulous Offensive scheme that Purdue runs it always is under Matt Painter. He's got like 200 plays that he runs But his team is expert at cutting getting great spacing They run some overloads to isolate Edie in the post just really a well-conceived offense and, and one thing and you alluded to it a little bit earlier and We don't talk about it a lot, but it really matters for Purdue He needs guys on the perimeter who are good at feeding the post the way they play feeding the post and then good at shooting because you, you've got to be able to stretch a defense to give Zach Eady some space inside. A little bit different with Eady out. Caleb First is in, the 6'10 sophomore from Fort Wayne. That's him with the ball. A little bit more of a stretch pick. Well, look how far out Purdue's having to run their offense because of the pressure West Virginia's put on. Lawyer got it off, didn't hit it, and the rebound down to Trey Mitchell. What does Trey Mitchell do for this program? Well, Trey Mitchell transferred in. He started at UMass, transferred in from Texas. He's really talented. Good offensive rebounder, shoots it to three-point range. Yeah, he's a stretch big, and he can also post and operate out of the mid post. And he's got a, a matchup on right now with David Jenkins Jr. that he can he can go against. Instead, into the far corner it goes for Emmett Matthews Jr., who misses the three. Matthews started in Morgantown, transferred to Washington for a year to be closer to home, and then came back. What a great feed ahead! Oh, what a block! Brandon Newman. That was absolutely spectacular. They called goaltending there? I believe they called goaltending. Oh, I, no way. They must have thought it hit the backboard, yeah. but it, I don't think it did. That was a spectacular block. Unfortunate. So West Virginia back within four. Nice lead pass by Toussaint as well. But what a great play by West Virginia. 
You talk about a well-conceived offense. I don't think anybody's better. Good pass. Lawyer inside and first with a finish. First is left-handed. Indiana Mr. Basketball shot 57% last year from the field. Also knocked down 11 threes. Purdue 3, you know, they beat Milwaukee, Austin P, and then they had a really good test from Marquette their last time out, a game in which they trailed most of the night before winning it at the end by five. A bucket to the other end for Mo Wagi, the 6'10 sophomore from the Bronx. Another mobile big guy. That was a really good cut by Wagi. Good ball pressure, but maybe a little bit too much as it turns out as Kedrian Johnson is called for the foul, and that is his second. It's going to knock him out of the game as Kobe Johnson, no relation, a 6'3 sophomore from Canton, Ohio, comes in. Kobe Johnson brings some length as a guard. He's got really long arms. It's nice to be tall. It's better in this game to be long. Ryan Waddell is coming now for Purdue. 6'8", redshirt freshman from Carmel, Indiana. Let's him with the ball. Looking inside for Trey Kaufman Red. He really operates well out of the mid post. That's pretty, huh? Face up, get into the paint with a jump hook. Whether it's the post, the mid post, he is a versatile talent. Kaufman Red can back you down, can run the floor. Mark Painter's got a lot of different options with this team. I think Toussaint, as he started that play, was thinking about a lob to Wagi, but it turned into a bucket. He led Iowa in assists and steals playing for Fran McCaffrey. And he was really good against Pitt. I think he had 18 points, five assists. So again, he's familiar with playing against Purdue, and they are familiar with him. Kaufman ran again, a lot of contact, and the foul going on to Wagi. I think that might be the toughest thing to have to officiate are these back downs. What contact are you going to call? But Toussaint, that little screen out top, Caleb first not up there. And Toussaint just got a straight line drive to get that little floater. It looked like he might have had a, a thing to say or at least a look over to the Purdue bench on his way back down the court. He might have said, remember me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm that guy. Again, the isolation for Kaufman Wren. At the back of the iron first is there and he's there with a the follow to make it a six-point lead the big guys for Purdue whether it's Edie first or Kaufman Wren have all been very effective in the early going but Caleb first the lefty had a such a solid freshman year his defense has improved he's coming off the bench but he's got the ability to stretch the floor in addition to playing inside and getting on the glass Wagi into the chest of first, takes the contact, but misses the runner. And so far, it's been gang rebounding for Purdue. They're sending a lot of black shirts to the glass, and really defensively, and this is true of every team, all five guys should be going to the defensive board. Newman frees himself for a 17-footer, but can't hit it. And James Okonkwo down with a rebound. Both coaches going pretty deep into their benches here in the middle of the first half as Kobe Johnson knocks it down. A really nice job to get into the chest of the defender, knock him back a little bit for that pull-up. First of two we've got for you here tonight. Gonzaga and Portland State still to come here from the Phil Knight Legacy. Newman. Yes. He's got a nice game, doesn't he? Junior from Valparaiso comes in averaging just over nine points per game. He can catch and shoot. Really good mid-range game. All kinds of reinforcements getting to check in for both teams. We've had a long run without a whistle. Toussaint wants a ball screen. There's nobody anywhere near him, so he's going to put it up. Well, that's not the play they wanted, but it worked. The play Toussaint on it. <laughs> the old call for the ball screen. Nobody there. Hit a three. I love it when the when the teams hold up a, a whiteboard with the play on it, like you can look back while you're bringing the ball up. For it. <laughs> David Jenkins Jr. answers with a three of his own. Big difference in the, this West Virginia team this year. This group can really make shots. 
And last year, scoring was a real challenge. And anytime you can't score, it ultimately affects your defense. And Jenkins, with his head down, a little bit out of control, runs into a defender and is called for the charge. His second. 10.39 to go in the first half. Purdue up six on West Virginia. How'd they get that? Later made a, an amazing play toward the end of the end of the half, but they are physical defensively. Four subs for the Boilermakers, including Zach Eady coming back in. So he basically, basically, he played until the first media timeout. He sat, and then he sat through the second media timeout. Back in there now. Stevenson, a guy you got to keep in check. He can fire from anywhere. Two shots off to a good start tonight. Bell inside, bothered by Edie. Smith has returned. Now the ball screen by Edie. Smith goes the other way. Yeah, Morton screened Edie out to set that ball screen. Then Morton pops out. So you have options to go inside or throw it back. Pass through the fingertips of E.D. He was saying he was getting pushed in the back at the time. And again, don't let Stevenson get going. He can heat up in a hurry. At 21 points against Penn, 16 against Pitt. And he scored over 1,200 points in his career. It's been a, this is his fourth school, but you, know, you want to take away his initial shot. Don't let him shoot it from the catch spot. But he can also pull up, as he just proved. Wichita State, Washington. South Carolina and now West Virginia. He's going to lay off Bell. They don't fear the jump shot from him out there. They do fear this one a little bit, though. Stevenson a miss. That's the problem. It's not so much Bell. If you're not there, he plays that drop coverage. You don't want to take him too far out and put him in a position to pick up a foul, but Stevenson can pull up. Gillis with a corner three. And he starts to heat up. Mason Gillis was 0 for 5 his last couple of games. Got off to a slow start shooting the ball, but he can knock down shots. One of the leaders on this team, and a guy who was a catch played in the Little League World Series. A guy who was very good at another sport, obviously. I think today's his birthday. Oh, really? He turns 22 today. I wonder if he gets combo gifts like us Christmas babies get. The turnaround by Trey Mitchell. Yet we were talking, well, I remember who it was. Uh, was it Nolan Smith's son who was turning yeah. two in a couple of weeks? And you were warning Nolan Smith's son who's turning two. Don't accept combo gifts. I think I think if you've got like a Christmas birthday, I was born December 24th. I think combo gifts it should be a federal crime. <laughs> and it looks like Bell got underneath Edie, tried to ride him out of the way, and got caught doing it. Who on this floor is not underneath Edie? <laughs> Everybody's underneath him. Mason Gillis just fading to the corner as that action from Morton was going toward him and got his feet set. You know, he's such a, a glue guy, versatile, good free throw shooter, good offensive rebounder. And last year he was basically close to 50% from the field, 40% from three, over 80% from the foul line. Edie knocks down the first. He's already had a 30-point, 11-rebound game this year. That was against Austin P. He's had a game with 10 offensive rebounds, 17 in total. That's against Milwaukee. He's had six blocks in a game. And he gets the roll. But what a weapon he is when you foul him. He goes to the line and punish you, yeah. punishes you by making his free throws. There are a lot of big bodies in the Big Ten. It's a league loaded with quality big, bigs. He is the biggest of them all. McGee the handoff. Stevenson knocks it down. What a beautiful stroke he has. Shooting 60% from the field on the season coming in, averaging a team high 14 points per game. He doesn't need much room, Eric Stevenson. He shot 90% from the foul line last year at South Carolina. Lucky giving up a lot of strength here and now. Yeah. Yep. Boy, Stevenson was coming over, getting ready to steal that ball, but the foul called on Wagi prior to that. Yeah, Wagi just reached in across his shoulder. I'll definitely pass along. Zach Eady at the line again for Purdue. He's already four for four from the line. He's got eight points in the early going here in this one. Well, 
I'm liking it. I can imagine again we showed that picture of him as a kid maybe 10 11 years old playing hockey in Toronto can you imagine I mean you wouldn't know who Zach Eady is and then you get to your game at the local arena and you skate out on the ice one of the kids on the other teams and you see a guy who's probably like over six feet tall already is a 10 year old must have been a little bit intimidating I wonder how many times when he was a, a little kid when he's going to school and some of the teachers that didn't know him were saying hey what are you doing yeah. here you know you need to get in the older classes Toussaint and a good rebound there by Braden Smith I really like Purdue's freshman guards. Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, the two freshman starters. Over the top, Morton finds Edie. And Bob Huggins is not going to be happy with the pressure on the ball there. There's only so much you can do guarding Edie to keep him from the basket. You have to have help from your teammates pressuring the ball so you can take away vision of the passer. And on that last play, Ethan Morton just didn't have enough pressure on him. You know, Stevenson didn't have his hands up. And when your hands aren't up, you're not taking away vision. And Morton can throw that up as high as he wants to, and Edie can go get it. Cross screen, down low. And Lawyer called for lowering that shoulder. It's an offensive foul. And if it weren't for that, he had... He had his shoulders past Tucson, it looked like to me, and had a straight line to the basket. Should have just taken that line. Like, that's a tough call for, for Lawyer because he was past him. And I think you have all rights as a driver once you pass him, but if you go into the defender, you lose those rights. Mitchell for three. So Edie had to come out and play him a little bit, still contested the shot, and Mitchell missed it. We got that late pressure. Caught a little bit of the hand as it was released. Soft touch. Mason Gillis puts it on the deck and knocks down the jumper. Well, he knew it wasn't going to be long after the last two games going 0 for 5. We're not going to hold Gillis down. He's too good of a shooter. He's going to make those. It's not just Zach Edie. Lots of offensive options for Matt Peters' team. Corner three won't go for a Conquo. It's out of bounds, still back near basketball. So now Caleb first comes in, but it's not Edie who goes out. Gillis goes out, so now you've got first at the four and Edie at the five. First time we've seen this combo tonight. Caleb first. You switched up into Eric Stevenson. You switched to take something away, not just to pick the guy up. Toussaint taps it back out. Stevenson. This is the three. Long shot, long rebound again. Boy, Toussaint being very aggressive tonight. Good cut by Stevenson. Oh, a terrific finish. The adjustment that Stevenson had to make with Edie flying by. Never took his eyes off the rim. That's some concentration. Stevenson and Bob Huggins both wanted a foul call on Edie on that play. Smith gets by his defender, can't lay it in, and another long pass by Tucson. But they come up empty. Kobe Johnson should have gone straight up there. He would have received the foul. He tried to keep from getting the shot blocked, but there's no way with that angle he could use any English to get it off the glass. Touchdown low again for Edie, and an offensive foul. His first. Probably leading with that elbow. He could have just drop stepped to the basket. Just didn't feel the defender. He had the defender on the high side. Right there, drop step, and he got an easy bucket. You know, obviously there aren't many guys like this, and it looks like the officials are going to take a look at the monitor here. Maybe as he kind of got the forearm. Part of that's just he's so big that his forearm elbow, watch his left arm there. So the left arm into the side of the head of the defender, a conquo, and I think that's what they're looking at. The standard is usually if your arms are more up than out. But if they thought that 
you know that was unnecessary. It looks like his arms are more up than out. But it's certainly you know that that to me is like even if it's flagrant one that's like a pitcher pitching inside right you know let let them know that hey if you're going to keep doing that you, know, you might be tasting my elbow again and just an offensive foul so no flagrant one there there aren't many guys like him obviously so but back in the day maybe not 7 4 2 90 but there were lots of big back to the basket kind of five men what are the things that Zach Eadie is going to have to continue to work on as he goes forward in college and eventually as a professional to be the best that he can be? I, I, well, I think he can still stretch out where he can knock down a 17 foot jumper, maybe even the three point range at some point. He's never going to be the type where you would, you know, you'd have him as a, a Dirk Nowitzki stretch, you know, stretch five. That's not what he's going to be. But making quicker moves in the post, you know, when he can catch, get an angle, and, uh, and then to be able to Face up in the post and maybe even make one of those inside pivot Tim Duncan off the glass moves. I think he's got that in where he can do that. Lawyer guarded hard by Tucson, who's really given West Virginia some good minutes here in the first half. Kaufman ran in the post, left it short. And the foul is going to go on Seth Wilson, a 6 1 sophomore from Lorraine, Ohio. Lorraine <laughs> at the line just they were looking to see if it was a hook and a hold on Seth Wilson of West Virginia it was not they deemed it not to be anything more than just a common foul so it's one and one here for Caleb first and Purdue now nine for nine from the free throw line in this game Purdue's numbers are ridiculous I mean they're shooting close to 60 percent haven't missed a free throw this is always kind of a, a subplot, a story within a story in the great state of Indiana. Who gets Mr. Basketball? Purdue has gotten the last three, including first in 2021. Trace Jackson Davis was Mr. Basketball in Indiana back in 2019. Of course, it went two and is still at IU. And you know the runner-up when Trace Jackson Davis won Mr. Basketball in Indiana? Hmm. I don't know. Brandon Newman. Oh. So they've got... Uh, He's got a lot of gripes. Yeah. <laughs> And now we were told there was a change in an earlier foul call. It was assessed incorrectly to Braden Smith. Now it is on Fletcher Lawyer. The second free throw is good, and away we go. Matthews driving, taking the contact. And he'll be rewarded with a trip to the foul line. Well, that was a smart play by Emmett Matthews Jr., the lefty, with Zach Eady out of the game. And drive that thing and get to the rim. Eady on the bench. Matthews, a very experienced player. Again, started in Morgantown, went to Washington, transferred back. And this is his 128th game, his 103rd start in his collegiate career. It's a little bit unusual to transfer from one place and then come back after after you've transferred. And somebody asked Bob Huggins, why did why did Matthews decide to come back? And Huggins deadpan, my effervescent personality. <laughs> there is nobody better than Bob Huggins. He is just the best. Yeah, there's nobody whose dry is funnier than Bob Huggins. By the way, Matthews on the verge of a milestone. That free throw now gives him 998 career points. And I know I've said this before, but there is no coach in America that has prettier handwriting than Huggins. It's ridiculous. Tough shot. And it will go. Maybe, maybe not so tough for Brandon Newman. Yeah, I think he looked over and said, tough for you, maybe. <laughs> Maybe heard us talking about the Mr. Basketball runner-up, so I'll show you. And air ball in the three for two shot. The Boilermakers with it. Nice pass. Smith with a nice dish back to Kaufman Wren, but he missed the three. First the rebound. Newman with a shot fake. And he's a little bit strong on the three. A decent looks on that trip for the Boilermakers, though. Kaufman Wren almost got a, an offensive rebound off that miss. A lot of contact there. Mr. 
Virginia's got to get a little bit more movement in the offense. There's a lot of catch and hold, and there hasn't been as much cutting as I think they want to see, where the ball's got to move and players have to move. I think this last possession and a few of the possessions we've seen thus far, West Virginia's been a little bit too easy to guard because there hasn't been enough movement. Maybe a little bit of that reason goes to the two early fouls that Hedry and Johnson picked up, the starting point guard. They've got three players who each picked up Two fouls relatively quickly and have gone to the bench. One of the others, Jimmy Bell Jr., their five man. This last two minutes, 33 seconds of the first half, it's going to be important for West Virginia to get a couple of scores, get a couple of stops, and get this under 10 going into the second half. Stevenson for three. And the rebound down to Tucson. He'll put it back up and knock it down. Trey Mitchell kept that ball alive when you can't grab it and usually traditionally West Virginia any Bob Huggins coach team is a good offensive rebounding team and how about Tucson off the bench Jay with ten points five rebounds and two assists in this game and Matt Painter talked about it before the game I mean, he, he's one of those guys that can get you 20 in a game there are other games where he's not as productive but he's got the ability to put numbers up Newman called for the offensive foul and Edie is going to check back into the game. Gillis will as well as they get their assignment set. Ten minutes, 12 points, six for six from the free throw line. And this is fairly typical. Again, he's playing about 30 minutes a game, and he's averaging almost 21 points and 14 rebounds. Even last year, when he only played 19 minutes a game, he averaged 14 and close to 8. I mean, I, I take that to a 40 minute basis, he averaged over 30 points and 15 rebounds. Jenkins knocks down a 17 footer. And Purdue has a number of really good pull up jump shooters. They say the mid range game is dead, it is not dead in West Lafayette. Isn't that one of the best places? Mackey is one of the best places in America for a game. And probably the most underrated, I'd say. Absolutely. Absolutely the most underrated when you hear people talk. And there are, there are so many great ones in here. Kansas and Duke and Indiana, and those are all valid. Mackey Arena is right there with any of them for atmosphere uh, and, and just the intensity of the noise in that building. David Jenkins, Jr., who transferred in from Utah, started at South Dakota State, went to UNLV, then Utah before settling on Purdue. He scored over 1,800 career points and averaged about 20 at South Dakota State, over 15 at UNLV. He's all Mountain West. He's got game. He can really score. So a jackrabbit to a running rebel to a youth to a boiler. The mascots are getting tougher as he goes along. You think a Boilermaker could handle a jackrabbit? Absolutely. A little 1-3-1 to start here. Always looking inside to Edie, but he's being defended well by Trey Mitchell right now. Yeah, Bob Huggins didn't run much 1-3-1 before he got to West Virginia. Actually, Joe Mazzula kind of taught it to him from John B. Line. Tucson comes up with a steal. And Wilson knocks it down, and you talked about it being a big couple of minutes for the Boilermakers. And now you have to build on that by getting a stop and maybe take a little bit of momentum. I always like, I don't know what it is, maybe it's a mental thing, but if you can get it under 10, it just makes you feel better. It's a really good pass by Joe Toussaint after the steal in transition to hit Seth Wilson. Not changing. Hall of Famer now, right? Hall of Famer by Nate Huggins. Smith Memorial yeah. Basketball Hall of Fame. 920 wins tied with Jim Calhoun for third all time among D1 coaches behind only Mike Krzyzewski and Jim Bayham. Went to the Final Four in 1992 with Cincinnati again in 2010 with West Virginia. Had Deshaun Butler on that team. Boy, a great look there for Morton. And the call is going against Gillis, so it'll be West Virginia ball. Plenty of time. Oh, you got one and one here. Yeah, they're over the limit, so it'll be one and one for the Mountaineers. Would you have liked playing for a guy like Bob Huggins? I would have loved it. He would have hated me playing for him. 
Wilson at the line. Seth Wilson is the second all-time leading scorer at his high school. You know who the all-time leading scorer at his high school is? I do not. LeBron James. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hang with him. You're going to be second, not bad. <laughs> what the St. Vincent St. Mary in Akron, Ohio. Down to eight, and the Boilermakers with a chance to get the last shot of the first half. Gillis from deep oh. in the corner hits a three. Time for the Mountaineers. And it won't go for Toussaint. A big shot near the end of the first half for Mason Gillis from about as deep in the corner as you can be. Zach Eady leading the way for the Boilermakers with 12 points. Eight Purdue turnovers West Virginia did in that first half. They've got to have some more of that. A look at our bracket. Duke got all it could handle from Oregon State. The Beavers had the lead for much of that game before Duke won it late. Xavier, the Florida. We've still got Gonzaga and Portland State. The Vikings coming up later on tonight, right after this one, in fact. Duke wound up winning that game because of the offensive glass. They got a million offensive rebounds in that game. Johnson and draws an early foul. To your point, Kedri and Johnson only played six minutes in the first half. Jimmy Bell Jr. only played seven minutes in the first half. And even though Zach Eady's protecting the rim, you still have to attack the paint. Because uh, I, this is a much better shooting team, West Virginia, than 2 of 15 from 3. Stevenson doesn't get the bounce, and Eady wraps up the rebound. Does such a good job of stretching the floor because they have multiple players that can all dribble, pass, and shoot. And that gives Zach Eady even more space to operate. Lawyer got free but missed the shot. Matthews is shaken up, and that's why Lawyer got free. Something happened to Emmett Matthews Jr. I can tell you from experience, no lawyer is free. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he got yeah. shaken up. He ran into a uh, the building known as Zach Eady. And Eady was called for a foul on the play, his second. And I'm sure he goes through this a lot. You can see him talking to his coach saying, what did I do? I didn't do anything. But when you're that big and that strong, guys get banged up. Guys go flying. And sometimes they go to the monitor to have a look at it. Well, anytime somebody gets hurt like that, you don't see exactly what happened. It's the prudent thing to go to the monitor, but there's nothing there. And a very quick look at the monitor by the officials. Edie's setting a screen. Uh, incidental contact. Matthews running into the shoulder of Edie. So just a common foul, the second personal. And Edie can get really wide on those screens. He doesn't necessarily have to do because it's so big. Just his presence means that the defender is going to have to take a wide trip around. Using Jimmy Bell Jr. to screen and then rescreen to try to free up Eric Stevenson. Couldn't get the shot off, but he finds Johnson who buries the three. And that's one of the things that was missing from this West Virginia attack in the first half because of the two fouls that Kedre Johnson picked up. A lot of newcomers, a lot of transfers on this West Virginia team. Bob Huggins still learning about this group. Gillis kept his foot down. And now a touch for Edie. Too strong off the window. Nice job by Trey Mitchell to come over from the weak side and just be big there and not give Edie an angle to the basket. Mitchell the spin and actually kind of drifting away from the bucket. He can't convert. Get some quick moves though for a 6'9 guy. No, he's a good player. Floater short. Edie the rebound. And he leaves it short. 
Well, even though West Virginia has not shot the ball well, we mentioned two of 15 from three in the first half, they are still within striking distance. You get a couple of stops, knock down a couple of shots, all of a sudden there's some game pressure on Purdue. And this game, the complexion of the game takes on a completely different look. Stevenson. And Edie the rebound. Boy, Stevenson does do a great job at stopping on a dime and elevating straight up in the air. Everyone he takes looks like it's going to go in. Loose ball. Great hustle there by Gillis. Morton. And he is fouled. It all started, though, with a hustle play by Mason Gillis. Just a great play by Gillis. Diving on the floor, first to the floor, and something good comes out of it. Now you can slide with it. You're not supposed to be able to necessarily roll over. But smart play by Morton. It wasn't that he was trying to make that shot. He, he knew he had the contact and went into it just to pick up the foul. Just a really smart play. Morton, a junior from Butler, Pennsylvania. Not a big score, but a, a good defender, a good post passer, and a guy who's just really solid, Jay, in what he brings to this program. Yeah, he shot like 43, 44% from three last year. He's got a really good feel. And you're right, he's, he can defend multiple spots, so he can switch out and take a bigger guy and guard a, guard a smaller guy. Boilermakers, a team that had a really good year last year, 29 and 8. They were a three seed, got to the Sweet 16, and then they lost to St. Peter's, and then they lost a lot of really good players, none better than Jaden Ivey, who was the fifth pick in the NBA draft. But this has been a great program under Matt Painter. They've gone to the NCAA tournament seven consecutive years. And with the ranking they've got this week, as Bell tips it in, they've now been ranked for at least one week in eight consecutive seasons. Boy, that drive by Kedrian Johnson was big time because he drew Zach Eady to block the shot, and that opened up the offensive glass. When Eady goes for a block shot out of his area, it almost didn't matter that Johnson didn't make it. Nobody turned to block out, and then Bell Jr. right there to tip it in. That's one of the ways you can move Zach Eady away from the rim. And the foul on Kedrian Johnson, his third. So again, he only played six minutes in the first half. He's got to go to the bench here early in the second, but they do bring in Joe Toussaint, who was terrific in the first half. Into Eady. What is Bell doing well to make life tougher on Eady? He is botting him up. So he, he's fighting him for position. He can do that. Not a lot of players have that kind of strength, but he's making him catch it just a step or two off. And then he's walling up. He's using that big body. And Edie's trying to get into that body and back him up a little bit so he can get some space to shoot that jump hook. And he just got his feet tangled up and walked with it. That's just really good defense without fouling. But now he's called for the offensive foul, trying to set a screen to get Toussaint free. He just tried to roll the defender down. You know, he's, he's there to set a screen. And then when the defender was kind of going underneath, he tried to roll him down into the basket. The official saw it. And Jay, his third. So on successive plays, really, Johnson and Bell both pick up their third, both go to the bench. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be there that long. And now it's up to Mo Wagi. He's only 225 pounds. And he's entrusted with the job of trying to defend Edie at times. Long three no, and Edie gets out. You get a little frustrated underneath as uh, getting grabbed trying to go up for a rebound. You got to switch your defense without Jimmy Bell Jr. in there. You go to more of a, a zone look. We've seen a 1 3 1 from Bob Huggins. And you have to try to do some different things because, I mean, who's going to guard Zach Edie with Bell out of the game? That foul on Trey Mitchell, I believe. Here comes the double. He kicks it. The extra pass. And another one. And now Lawyer is fouled. And foul trouble accumulating here for the Mountaineers. It's a great job by Lawyer to drive the closeout off the reversal. And, and Edie... 
while we talk about how big he is and how he rebounds block shots he's a good passer and he passes out of the post very well you bring a double he can turn and actually pass over it but he doesn't get flustered when and he can pass out and that puts you into scramble and these skilled perimeter players take advantage of defenders flying at them closing out in a hurry because they can shoot it and they can all dribble and pass Mitchell has gone to the bench now with his fourth Edie with the left hand this time can't convert and this is a real rarity for him he's three for seven tonight usually converts at a much higher rate and West Virginia can't afford those kind of turnovers nice deflection by Wagi and Toussaint bounced it off his own knee and Edie is fouled and will be at the free throw line when we come back. Our second game coming up tonight. Portland State will take on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. What kind of competition. What makes him stand out, though, amongst this talented group? Well, just like he said, he's extremely confident. I mean, he plays with a ton of swag. I think that's because uh, growing up down in Dallas, he played against all the great players and, and played against guys that were older than him and probably more athletic than him. And that's where he kind of developed this arsenal and, and footwork that he has to, to get shots off and, and, and to find kind of unique ways to score. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of our job to create angles and avenues and, and situations where we can give him just a little bit of an edge because if you give him that, he's, he's, he's amazingly uh, efficient. It's still Thanksgiving here, at least for a few more hours, but when we tip, it's East Coast is going to be 1230. Everybody's going to be up having their late night plate. Tell me what it looks like for a Coach Few late night Thanksgiving plate. Well, we're having ours on Saturday, and, and sadly, uh, that's sad because I'm a huge uh, Thanksgiving guy. It's my favorite uh, meal of the year. It's one of my favorite days of the year, and, and uh, you know, it's just a good time to take pause even when you're, you know, complaining about our ball screen coverage or our turnovers to just step back and give thanks for, I mean, I'm so blessed to have this job and be part of this program and be around these great group of guys. So. Thank you. Yep. So not many uh, reasons why Mark Few would put Thanksgiving on hold, but the Zags are going to celebrate on Saturday because they get a basketball game coming up in about an hour, and we'll have it for you here as they take on Portland State. Trey Kaufman Wren, the redshirt freshman from Sellersburg, Indiana, knocks down the three, and it's back to a 13-point game. And that's the first made field goal of the second half for Purdue. You know, West Virginia has turned them over a few times. They've given up some free throws, but the Mountaineers have had some opportunities cut into this lead haven't been able to do it and now Kaufman ran with a block on a driving Matthews but then he gets called for a foul and Purdue has knocked down every free throw opportunity in this game we've seen a lot of good free throw shooting over the last few days in our games well, the Boilermakers are 14 for 14 from the line tonight also six for 13 from three-point range this is I mean, Matt Painter always has good offensive teams, and it looks like he's got another one this year. But to start the second half, West Virginia has has fought for a number of stops, but they've turned the ball over right afterwards and haven't gotten anything out of it. Toussaint, step back jumper from the elbow. Oh! And the impressive follow by Stevenson. Well, he is a two-way player. You don't know, box him out. Athletic. His jump shot is off the charts good. And then Lawyer is fouled, and Toussaint is hopping mad about that. Down near the other end of the court. He thought they were out on a three-on-0. But so it'll be his second foul. Shot goes up. Stevenson coming in from the wing and nobody puts a body on it. He was all the way almost toward the corner. And it's a beautiful finish by Eric Stevenson. He's a baller. But at the other end, the boiler, uh, the uh, Mountaineers rather, they've got some issues. They've got three important players on the bench with Palatine. And Purdue is already into the bonus with 14.28 to go. And Purdue is a perfect, as we mentioned, from the line tonight. And overall, a very good free throw shooting team, 75% on the season. And they're going to be shooting a whole bunch of free throws the rest of the way in this one. And obviously, that's 
really early to put your opponent into the one and one and that tends to take away your aggressiveness I don't think it will with West Virginia especially trying to make a comeback here but that does mean that this Purdue team that has knocked down every free throw opportunity they've seen is going to be wearing out that free throw line if they're aggressive Stevenson aggressive because of that jump shot you have to press up on him. You don't want Eric Stevenson to be able to shoot the ball from the catch spot, but he'd give it gives you any kind of shot fake ball fake. You know, he can drive it, he's strong. He can pull up. And first got called for the foul, so Stevenson to the line. It looked like Brandon Newman got his arm from behind. I didn't think first really made much contact with him. It didn't matter, he's going to the line anyway. Boy, and you wonder with some of the other guys on the bench with fouls, Jay, if Stevenson is just going to say to himself, I got to do a lot here. I got I to gotta lead the way at the offensive end of the court. Well, he can certainly do that. But the issue is, is continuing to get stops. And any sort of risk you take, you're putting Purdue back to the free throw line with any common foul. Knocks him down. Still an 11 point lead for Purdue. The ninth all time meeting between these two programs. Purdue leading 7 to 1 last night in 2013. Stevenson again seeking out the contact, and he'll go back to the line again. West Virginia given a, a bit of a zone look, and that was an unforced error by Purdue. Some of their turnovers have been forced. That one was not. But West Virginia with an opportunity to convert off that turnover. And there were so many turnovers they forced that they were unable to convert. So two shots again for Stevenson. Who last year at South Carolina went 61 for 62 from the free throw line. One miss all season. I can't believe these young players just don't concentrate when they go to the line, put missing the, that one shot. Put the time in here. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing but net on both. Down to nine. They're sticking with the zone look. And out of bounds, a turnover. And I'll tell you, Toussaint and Stevenson are both some kind of fired up right now. And really, the turnovers, the last couple possessions, they're not what you would call forced turnovers. Just trying to initiate offense. See if Matthews can get in on the offense. Good decision not to force it there. Knocked away, was deflected into the backcourt. Shot clock at five. Stevenson loses it again. Oh, what a nice job by Brandon Newman. And Stevenson is hurt. Stevenson is jammed behind the play, trying to get up, but unable to really put any weight on his left leg. But Stevenson on the bench. So a lot of the second unit in here right now for Bob Huggins. But a guy in Tucson at the point right now, obviously very experienced, a ton of playing time with Iowa. Adrian Johnson has come back into the game for the Mountaineers, but they turn it over here with a miscommunication between Matthews and Wagi. It's just a tough spot. To, to feed the post. You know, well, he's on the, the left side of the lane, and even if he catches that pass, he's taken to the left corner. It's one thing if you're posted up and you're going high-low in the middle of the lane, but that's better if you throw it to the left wing to make that post entry. Jimmy Bell Jr.'s come back into the game with three fouls as well now for West Virginia. Waddell with a baseline drive and a nice little shovel pass to finish for Hockman Wren, who is giving Purdue some very good minutes tonight. I'm really impressed with Trey Kaufman Wren. K 
Caleb first was leaning all over Jimmy Bell Jr. Was draped on it. His second. And now Seth Wilson's going to come back in as Kobe Johnson goes to the bench. A lot of substituting now for Bob Huggins, in part due to an injury, in part due to the foul trouble. Well, one thing you know about a Bob Huggins team doesn't matter if they're undermanned, doesn't matter what the score is, they're not going to give up. They're going to fight. No, they're going to play hard. Toussaint elevates and knocks down another one. He's got a dozen. Really smart play. Caleb first and drop coverage. So it's going to open up that little short jumper off the screen from Jimmy Bell Jr. This is the elbow jumper. Toussaint, too strong. First knocks it down. And grabbing the loose ball is Brandon Newman. And we got another collision and another foul. And this one going against Jimmy Bell Jr. He just pulled Caleb yeah. first down. And number four. I don't know whether Toussaint was throwing that up to the rim for just turned over this Purdue team 12 times in this game, but they only have seven points to show for it. And that's just not converting off of opportunities. They've worked, you know, they work so hard to get those 12 turnovers and then to only realize seven points off those turnovers. That's got to change. Wagi elevating easily and slamming it home. That's off a missed free throw, and they go the other way. The first missed free throw of the night for the Boilermakers, still 16 for 17. Great man to man for West Virginia. Everything West Virginia does, they got to do without foul because that's free throws every time. Great job running the court and a really good pass by Kedrian Johnson. Well, it's been tough for West Virginia to get easy baskets. There haven't been many of them. Waddell into first. Good defense knocked away by Tucson. And first was calling a timeout. Yes, and, and Kelly Pfeiffer, one of the officials, he heard him just before he got sworn. But he got the timeout called. So Purdue will retain possession. You'll have to see guys getting down on the floor. Carolina playing a game at 10 o'clock local time. And I've got a chance to watch some basketball while prepping for these games tonight. This is great. Tonight, today, tonight, all day tomorrow, Sunday, a ton of basketball as well. Men's and women's from three different venues here in Portland. Now there were only two seconds on the shot clock, but Wagi just was called for a foul trying to defend the inbounds. That has been emblematic of the day for West Virginia. I mean, the Mountaineers shooting 40%. They're 3 of 16 from three-point range. They've not been able to capitalize on the turnovers that they forced, and then with a short shot clock, instead of just staying between Zach Eady and the basket, fouling him and putting him on the line. Where he's been perfect tonight. This is about the best thing you can do as a big guy. Work on your free throws. Ten of ten. On Julia. To Brandon Newman. He was denying Kedrian Johnson, forced him back out, and then trying to make that pass. I mean, look, it wasn't a good pass. It should have been completed. But I give credit to Newman there for helping force that turnover. Newman loses it. And out ahead of the pack, Tucson to lay it in. West Virginia is creating opportunities, and that's one they converted on. 
There is plenty of time left in this game. I mean, 10 points is not a big spread here. Make it 12. Waddell with a beautiful feed to Amy. Ryan Waddell, a redshirt freshman from Carmel, Indiana. His father, Matt Waddell, played with Matt Painter and was a thousand point scorer at Purdue. And a push at the other end, and it's, by the way, bonus both ways. It's double bonus for Purdue, but West Virginia going to the line as well. Court spread, the baseline drive. Drew McGee over to cut off the baseline. Nobody rotates over because of the spread floor. It's just too much ground to cover. And that's too easy for Zach Eady. You know, and it's funny, you look at Eady's numbers, and you wouldn't say that he's been as dominant as he can be. A lot of the damage has been done at the line, but then you look at the box score, and in 17 minutes, he's got 18 points and nine rebounds. Just ridiculously efficient. Such a presence. Yeah. And, and he he's had several moves where he took shots he probably could have done a better job with, missed him, all that stuff, but he He's drawn a ton of fouls and he's opened up a ton of opportunities for his teammates. Ten point game again. This is a tough assignment for Lugie. Look how low he's got to get to try to push Edie off the block. Not nearly as strong as Bell, who's on the bench with four fouls. Edie a touch to Son. Knocks it out of his hands. Edie gets it back and turns it over. Good recovery and transition by this Purdue defense. Matthews goes around Edie. Can't finish it, but when he gets it, the Mountaineers quick to the basketball right now. Toussaint for three. And Edie down with a rebound, hands it off to Smith. Ten rebounds now for Zach Edie. This is a double double machine. Twenty and ten in eighteen minutes of action. Excuse me, eighteen and ten in eighteen minutes of action. Overloading to try to get it into Edie with single coverage. Now they bring the double. He can just see over the top of that. Does a good job not bringing the ball down, too. Smith with the offensive rebound. What a pass. And Gillis with a finish and a foul. So the initial action is difficult. But then the second shot has been difficult. Edie keeping it alive. Kicks it out, and then Morton with just a great look underneath to Gillis. And the fourth foul on Mo Wagi. So Gillis will be going to the line. Wagi is coming out, and now it's James Aconquo, a 6 8 sophomore from England, who is into the game to play in the middle. This Purdue team strikes me as, as a group of really good players that don't seem to care who gets the credit. And that's a great way to play. Well, moving his feet, staying in front of Wilson. Now Toussaint, got a switch. Gets it off. And it goes. Another soft rim shot here in Portland goes for Tucson. Nice little stop and pop by Tucson. But if he didn't stop, he's going to run into Edie down, down there. <laughs> and have a lot of chances. That would stop it. Boy, you got to be stronger with the ball against this West Virginia team. They've knocked it away a fair amount. Wide left on the three for Seth Wilson. Long rebound, and he knocks down the second attempt, and they've got it down into single digits. West Virginia has kept plugging.
misses the layup. Not whether he was sure, thinking that somebody was going to come over and try to block it, or the ball just slipped out of his hands. Johnson puts it up. All of a sudden, he realized, hey, there's nobody guarding me. Put up an 18-footer, but he didn't hit it. Oftentimes, when you shoot as an afterthought, it doesn't go in. Offensive foul on Braden Smith. Momentum shifting in the direction of the Mountaineers with 7.15 to go. One more look at the offensive foul going to break. Basically had two hands on that thing, but Wilson was able to knock it away and just give Pettiford a chance, and that's all you want is a chance. And right now, I think West Virginia, with 7.15 to go in regulation, has, has to feel like they have a chance. The Mountaineers have held Purdue to 33% shooting in this second half. But Purdue is 9 of 10 from the foul line. Adrian Johnson makes it a seven-point game. And they're doing this without two important players in Trey Mitchell and Jimmy Bell Jr., both of whom have been anchored to the bench with four fouls. Purdue's turned the ball over 16 times in this game after doing such a good job with the ball against Marquette and a lot of pressure. Needy with the offensive rebound off the miss by Lawyer. He wants the ball. He's calling for it to be thrown to Smith to get the angle. Good look weak side to Lawyer. Johnson knocks it out of bounds. It will stay with Purdue with nine on the shot clock. That was almost a pick six. Adrian Johnson read that all the way. And I think Bob Huggins has to be pleased with the effort defensively. It's just been the inability to convert. You know, just finishing off the turnovers they forced. Time it goes. He's got 20. Well, there's no way with position that deep. Oconquo just couldn't keep him out of the lane. You get that one foot in the lane. And he's going to be able to make that all night. When Jimmy Bell was on him, he was pushing him off the lane. Made it much more difficult for him to get to that spot. That pass off a leg out of bounds. It stays with West Virginia. Bob Huggins trying to get the attention of one of his players who didn't hear him. He just kept getting louder and louder to try to get his message through. Ten to shoot. Toussaint's had a really good night. And it gets a little bit better. A nice finish by Okonkwo. With great eyes to be able to see that. He was able to draw Zach Eady up just a little bit and make that drop off to the rim. Fourth assist of the night for Joe Toussaint. Into Eady again. This one is short. Johnson. Yes! Well, how badly did West Virginia need that one? Just the fourth three of the game. And here come the Mountaineers. They've got it all the way down to four. West Virginia right there on the catch, putting really good pressure on the ball. And a big shot for the Boilermakers as Smith knocks it down. Well, that's a heck of a pass from Ethan Morton. Trouble gets out of it. Johnson gets by Morton, but not Eady. Saved by Smith. And it'll be out of bounds to West Virginia at the other end. A tremendous effort by both Smith and Lawyer going after the ball. That's a gutsy play by Kedrian Johnson, but I think you could have predicted what might happen. <laughs> Smith fortunately okay. He went flying into the first row and over some chairs, keeping that ball in bounds. Now there's only one on the shot clock. And that'll be a shot clock violation. Almost hit the shot clock. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also a violation. So Purdue ball. 
And their fans getting noisy now, loving the defensive stand on that last trip. There's been so much pressure on this West Virginia defense all night long to get stops. They played at a deficit all game long. Ellis all the way inside. And draws the foul. That's a little shot fake and drive there for Mason Gillis. Not sure whether Kedrian Johnson was in the restricted arc or just didn't get there. Number four on Johnson. Yeah, he's in the restricted arc. He didn't get there either, but he's in the restricted arc. Which is easier for us to see than the one we were looking at in Mallon. Because of all the flowers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gillis has had a nice game, got 11 points, four for five from the field, has knocked on a couple of threes. And here comes Stevenson, who was out with what looked like a cramp. So we mentioned the guys with foul trouble. We neglected to mention the last few minutes Stevenson, who had really been the go-to guy offensively until the cramp. But even with those guys out, the defense, the defensive pressure ratcheted it up. Yeah. I think that last unit defensively was more effective, but were the effective scoring not as much. Bell has returned as well. Now Ethan Morton is guarding Eric Stevenson. Short, and he knew it. Bell comes down with it, puts it back up, and draws the foul. Looks like it's on 80. Bell will be at the line. What do we come back? Purdue with a nine point lead. Kind of a battle in their game before losing by seven. You never know. Well, Portland State beat Oregon State right. at Gill Coliseum in Corvallis. And you saw what Oregon State did against Duke today as a one possession game. Beavers having a great opportunity to win that game. Bell misses the first. Bob Huggins' team was down by 14. Here in the second half, they got it down to four. But the Boilermakers are up by nine. Really, the free throw disparity is, and the three-point disparity, one of the, the biggest differences in the game. 21 of 22 from the foul line. Purdue in this game, eight of 17 from three. And West Virginia has been unable to match those numbers, but still within striking distance. A little bit further on this one, but he'll get it to go, and he's got 22. When he can get two feet in the paint, he is so much better, so much, uh, so much more difficult to stop. When he's got a dribble into into the post, much more, much easier to deal with. Boy, a clean look for Stevenson, but he can't knock it down. Gill is the rebound. Now some trapping. You don't want to take the ball into that corner area, that coffin corner, where if you pick your dribble up, you're surrounded by the half-court line, the sideline, and two defenders. Inside three minutes, Purdue with the ball in a double-digit lead. Knocked away by Bell. And right back into Eden. And Bell took it away from him. That was a really good pass by Lawyer. Like a back shoulder throw by quarterback. Boy, and then Morton comes up with the loose ball and immediately calls a timeout. Ethan Morton is a smart poison in that two box was just taken out of the ball game. But he can he can fall out of bed and get 20 points. Looks like Zach Eady can as well in a very different manner, of course. Got a little push there from Bell that didn't get called. And there is the call on Bell. And that's going to foul him out of the game, right? Yep. Jimmy Bell Jr. fouls out with 2.43 to go. And sends Zach Eady back to the foul line where Purdue has done such great damage to West Virginia in this game. Just throw it up. This is a pretty good catch by Zach Eady. And then you see just he's straddling him there. And the referee calls the cylinder foul. And the coaches were talking to each other for a second, and uh, initially, whatever Bob Huggins said had Matt Pedro laughing. Huggins can make you laugh with the best of them. Now they've each gone back to their respective benches. And the first miss of the night. Oh, 
missed them both for the offensive rebound to Gillis, and he'll go to the line. And that'll drive Bob Huggins crazy. I mean, that's, a, that's just a free throw blockout. You know, the little things in the game that you work on. Second slot rebounder just wasn't blocked out. Didn't pinch down. It's Mason Gillis from that second slot just out working West Virginia. And getting a second chance opportunity. And that's why Wagee's coming out of the game and Conco's coming back in. Bob Huggins saying something to Wagee on his way by. Those are the kind of plays that get the coaches muttering. Yes. You, you, you do a lot of muttering, a lot of talking to yourself. Lane violation. Vikings in the house. Portland State looking to pull off an upset as they'll take on against Zaga in our second game tonight here at the Phil Knight Legacy. Since we've seen a lot of free throws, I, I think you and I have talked about this before. That's a rule I think needs to change or, or lane violation. You would like to see possession rather than the yeah. extra free throw, right? That was a great take by Eric Stevenson there in transition to not only get the foul, but get the bucket to go down. But the way I think it should be is his field goal percentage could be better. There were a couple times when he made moves, didn't complete them, that normally he would. But the amount of free throw opportunities, and then he goes and knocks those free throws down. You're looking at one efficient big guy at 7-4. And he's going to have a talk with Mason Gillis after this, saying, uh, "Mason, yeah. that's my rebound." Yeah. <laughs> he's I'm, taking a stand. I'm seven that. four. Right. You're not. Four games for the Boilermakers this year. Four double doubles. Purdue actually has not played in nine days. Most of the other teams have played. Say last Saturday, they've come in here having played four games. Purdue has not played in nine days before this one. Don't you find that when you have that that difference, Ooh, he can make any shot. Wow. I mean, Ethan Morton was right on him. 17 now for Stevenson, and it's back down to seven. That was deep in the corner. West Virginia keeps plugging, and they've got an opportunity here. Great job. Yes, it is. The possession arrow, though, keeps it with Purdue. But that was still a great job by Toussaint to go after that thing with two hands. If he just slaps at it, he's likely to pick up a foul. Boy, he actually had that ball pretty quickly, didn't he? Took it away from yeah, him. Yeah, that's what he's saying, is it should be their ball. He just reached in and grabbed it. Seven on the shot clock. Lawyer with a drive. Finds Gillis. Somebody's got to create. And it'll be a shot clock violation on Purdue. Boy, what a great possession. First, Toussaint ties it up. And then a shot clock violation. And Matt Painter telling his team, hey, got a seven-point lead. Everybody calm down. But just really good defense. Five guys playing as one for West Virginia. But now the key is you work that hard, you got to get a score here. Because it, it's really deflating if West Virginia doesn't score here. And time is definitely a factor. A minute 40 to go. Off the rim. Boy, it bounced twice on the rim and then came off for Tucson. And you could feel a little bit of air come out of it. You work that hard, get nothing, and then give up a layup. I mean, you, just, you could feel it, couldn't you? The air came out of them. Yeah, but they got it down to five. You got to take the ball out of the basket. You can put the press on. Knocked away. Great effort. Johnson into the chest of Edie. And Edie down with a rebound. Well, you give Johnson a lot of credit for having the guts to go in there. Oh. And Stevenson called for the foul. As Braden Smith goes flying into the table right in front of us. Yeah, that pushed our table back three feet. And that was a hard collision. Did that spill your martini? <laughs> I've long since finished my martini. Don't be silly. That was quite a blow he took. And called a flagrant one, which means two in the ball. 
Well, they, they fought, but in the end, just couldn't convert enough at the offensive end. And Purdue making their free throws a big part of the reason why they're going to win this game. Huge. I mean, they have lived at the free throw line. They have outscored the Mountaineers now by 14 at the free throw line. And it really started with the fouls early in the second half. Not to say they were unnecessary, but maybe they were unnecessary. I mean, they were inopportune moments, and some key guys went to the bench for long stretches, yeah. and it put Purdue on the line very early in the second half. Yeah, and, and sometimes there's not anything you can do about that. You know, the, the, you're going to pick up some fouls in the game, but I, I thought equally important was the, the times that West Virginia got stops, and they weren't able to convert on the other end. Yeah, they weren't able to score off those stops, so they turned it over. Edie again, 24. The go-to move, the jump hook over the left shoulder. I think we're going to see this Purdue team get better and better. That because they've got young guards, they're going to have their ups and downs throughout the course of a difficult season. But I like the makeup of this team. And I think Morton got a piece of that. Well, he hustles, doesn't he? It is going to be West Virginia ball, and that means that Morton got a piece of it. How about getting a fingertip on that shot from beyond the arc? And this will be a nice win for Purdue to go to 4-0 and on the season. The winner of this gets the winner of Portland State and Gonzaga. The loser will play the loser. Both of those games coming up tomorrow, and it will happen for you. Johnson with a drive, and a foul is called on Edie. Number four. Nobody for Purdue J playing more than 27 minutes in the game. All five starters playing between 24 and 27, and five guys off the bench all playing between 13 and 15. Just really good depth yeah. of guys that are skilled, can shoot it, can pass it, and that are tough. They've got some toughness on this team. Got some skill and some shooting and some passion getting ready in the hallway. Drew Timmy and his buddies getting ready to take on Portland State. Drew Timmy probably still celebrating the Cowboys win today. <laughs> Even though they didn't cover. Shot clock turned off. And that'll do it. Purdue is going to beat West Virginia 80-68, to led by 24 points and 12 rebounds from Zach Eady. And they'll advance into a semifinal here at the Phil Knight Legacy in Portland. Matt Painter, even though Purdue turned the ball over more than he would have liked, 